Hi, I'm uh, Morten, and this talk will focus on the Dobbin corruption scheme. So we'll see how to um, estimate the Grifo polynomials, and then we'll propose a new attack that breaks this scheme. So the techniques that we present here will also be um, relevant to other multivariate constructions, and particularly the uh, big field schemes. So this has been a joint work with uh, Patrick Felke and Håvard Radum. So first we'll still, uh, introduce multivariate encryption schemes with a focus on the double encryption scheme. So typically you will have uh, a system of quadratic polynomial equations and we'll let the field be GF2 in this case. So in to encrypt you um, <coughs> simply evaluate your polynomial system on the plain text you have, which gives you the ciphertext. For decryption you have to solve this resulting system um, essentially inverting this to recover your plain text. So the benefits are um, post-quantum security, efficient encryption, and typically small ciphertexts. The drawbacks, however, have, however are uh, could be large public keys. Um, decryption are often inefficient depending on the scheme, and the security is also very hard to to get right, especially for multivariate encryption schemes. So. <clears throat> this is sort of the standard setup for uh, big field uh, encryption schemes. So you choose two invertible matrices, and then you have your uh, extension field isomorphism. So you start by kind of um, applying one of your matrices, then you go up to the extension field. Now you apply some sort of simple uh, function, polynomial over your extension field. Um, and this is chosen such that it's easy to invert. Then you go down again and apply your last matrix. So composing everything from left to right will give you your public key. And uh, these, uh, these polynomials will now be quadratic if you have chosen your f to be, um, yeah, if you have chosen your f properly. So the idea for uh, Macariora and Patara was to choose uh, the Dobertin polynomial, uh, Dobertin permutation for f, and you may note that sort of this um, polynomial in and of itself will have a high degree, but uh, what the, the authors show is that you can find, kind of given the, um, uh, the ciphertext, you're able to find a polynomial equation with low degree, which you can then use for decryption, decryption. so uh, where it's easy to, to sort of find roots. So that means that all of these uh, maps in this construction are invertible, and sort of inverse, inverting it piecewise will be how you decrypt. Now, if you take f kind of, if you use this as is and take f as a public key, then this would have been um, insecure. So it's an, unfortunately, it's like an, an avoidable consequence when you are choosing f like this, that there are um, degree four polynomials as they're called. So in this case, there will be degree four polynomials at degree three, meaning that there are combinations uh, where we take our, our quadratic public key, the f's, uh, multiply it with certain linear forms. And uh, you'd a priori expect this to be of degree three, however, this is actually of degree two. Um, and this is uh, this makes it that much more vulnerable to ground the basis attacks, which is essentially essentially how you are able to solve this as an attacker. So in order to kind of avoid this or hide these degree four polynomials, you typically modify it. So we'll talk about the two types of modifiers that's used in the Dobbin encryption scheme. First one is the internal perturbation, IP. <clears throat> so now you choose k linear forms, uh, v, the vi's, and then you sort of add quadratic combinations of them to your public key. So sort of if, if f is your old public key, you add quadratic combinations, and this leaves you with kind of the new modified public key. The other modifier, which is used in conjunction is uh, with the IP, is q plus. So now you choose t uh, random quadratic polynomials, uh, the Qs, and now you add linear combinations of them to the public key much in the same way as you did above. <clears throat> and these modifiers will be uh, secret, only known to the uh, uh, owner of the secret key. And how you decrypt now is that you sort of, you guess correct values for these linear forms as well as these quadratic polynomials. So for each such guess, you essentially end up with kind of your F system again. Uh, and we, we saw how to decrypt that in the previous slide. 
so that's, so that also means that you can't choose too many of the modifiers because this definitely increases your decryption time. And also if, if an attacker is able to uh, somehow retrieve the modifiers that would have broken the system. So the modifiers doesn't... Ah, yes. And uh, just to give you an idea of the suggested 8-bit parameters, um, they choose sort of D to be 129 and T and K. So that's your um, linear forms and the quadratic polynomial is to be 6. So um, adding these modifiers, I mean, it doesn't completely remove the... Um, degree faults uh, from the system, but it typically sort of forces them to appear at a higher degree. So the idea is that if you add enough of them, um, the degree faults will only appear at such a high degree that it's infeasible to compute. So now we sort of go into try, trying to estimate how many of the, these degree fault polynomials there, there will be. So, so first of all, we'll estimate when they will appear, at which degree they will appear, which is typically known as the uh, the first fall degree. Uh, but we also go a bit further and kind of estimate the total number that we expect to find. So since we only care about degree fall polynomials now, we'll work with homogeneous ideals and graded rings. Uh, we'll kill off all the squares. And sort of for any polynomial, we'll just consider the, the leading form, so that's the, the highest degree part. And then we'll uh, define sort of the um, ideal of the public key, so that's the quadratic parts of all these public polynomials, and we also define the uh, modifier ideal, um, which could then be both the IP combinations and Q plus combinations, only the quadratic part. And then PL will denote the degree part of, of the ideals, so for example P3 will be sort of uh, the quadratic public keys as well as uh, any linear combinations of them. So let's, let's kind of recall how we actually defined our public key. So we had, uh, and again, now we kind of only care about this, um, the quadratic part of it. So we do have this um, uh, original public key, the unmodified public key fi. And now we add kind of combinations um, kind of, that are kind of random coming from q plus and ip. And this is how you get your modified uh, public key. So we recall that kind of there, will, there were a lot of these degree fault polynomials. So we know that there are these um, combinations um, where you can kind of multiply with, with the, the f polynomials that will sum to zero, since we're only caring about the, the highest degree part. So if you do take these combinations, these, these g combinations, and now put p in place of f here, that will get us something. So by definition, the f parts uh, sums to zero, and we're left with something that's only depending on the the, the uh, well, that's depending on the modifier. So that would be in the modifier ideal. So sort of a first observation is that if you have a lot of these degree four polynomials, and the the dimension of your um, modifier ideal at a certain degree is not that high, then you would still kind of expect to see the grief of polynomials, even in a modified system. So this is sort of the intuition we have for, um, for this sort of first uh, formula estimating these uh, degree of polynomials. So for a degree nu, we <coughs> kind of look at uh, S, S and F, which will be uh, sort of the, the, uh, the non-trivial syzygies of the grief of polynomials in the unmodified system, so we count them first. Um, M is the uh, modifier ideal, so it, that, that I mentioned there. And then P and M is sort of a correction component as we've written here. So we don't want to count things twice, and at some degrees uh, there, sh there will be some overlap between M and P, so, so that's that sort of things. But the, the, uh, the main idea is sort of that at, at, at least for smaller degrees, all of these components can be computed. Um, so, so this can be computed by looking at this sort of simple description over the extension field of the double polynomial. And M is also relatively easy to compute because you assume, because the modifiers are uh, randomly chosen, so you can assume, assume some generosity of them, on them. Right. Um, so, so, so this is not the only estimate we can sort of think of. Um, so up to now, we kind of 
assume that all of these degree for original degree for polynomials plays a part. But we can also have an estimate where we only consider certain subsets of them. So the kind, of, the kind of benefit to this is that now we don't have to remove everything from the uh, modifier ideal, but kind of only certain sub-ideals of that. And sometimes that is a good trade-off. Um, so just to mention that, then we'll kind of uh, denote them with kind of different numbers here um, and kind of see the paper for more information. So essentially at kind of at each degree you get a finite amount of these estimates that we saw an example of on the last slide. And then we take kind of at, at, at each degree the largest of these estimates is what we expect to be uh, the degree for polynomials that we'll find. Um, and if all of them are negative then we simply expect to be, there to be no one. So to give you an example, this is how it looks for degree three. So this is kind of the, the estimate where we count everything. So then we do have 2D degree for polynomials in the unmodified system. And this is how the modifier ideal looks like. So this is the contribution from IP and this is the contribution from Q plus. If you go up to degree four, th things look uh, a little bit more messy, but it's still kind of reasonable. So, um, so this, this part sort of mostly grows by a factor n. The modifier ideal gets a little bit more complicated, uh, but you still have kind of clearly defined, this is the contribution from Q plus, from IP, and now we sort of have to not count things twice, essentially. And at this degree, we also get some of this, this um, extra component. We actually didn't get that degree three. Um, but here, this will be D. In this case, this will be the number of public polynomials and t plus q choose 2 will be the number of kind of quadratic uh, modifier polynomials. So it's actually just multiplying those, uh, um, those polynomials together. Uh, and we kind of come back to this, this part later. This will be uh, important. So <clears throat> we can see that, that, like, how does this actually look <laughs> in reality? Are, they, um, are these formulas capturing it? Um, and the answer seems to be yes. So here each row is an experiment. Um, these four first uh, row, uh, columns will be uh, uh, different parameters. Uh, this is what we predict from our formulas. So we have kind of written out these formulas up to degree five. Um, and, and kind of this is the number that we predict. And this is the, the number that we get from kind of running these experiments. And so that the, the first observation is that these numbers always agree with each other. And another observation, and I should also mention that kind of this is this is not just these few uh, experiments. We've actually run, I think we have almost four uh, pages full of tables like this in in um, in the extended version of the paper. So so like for all the experiments we run, um, these formulas are actually exact. So here we also see that different kind of formulas, different of these estimates become dominating depending on the par parameters. And lastly, we also note that we have D, which is the number of um, public polynomials, as well as the degree of the field extension, but we also have N, which will be the number of variables. And now in the dub encryption scheme, these are the same, but we do allow for N to be smaller than D, as we can see here. Um, so that was sort of that would mean that an attacker kind of guesses the values of some of the um, variables, which is known as a sort of hybrid attack. So here we see that kind of, and, and kind of guessing values like this uh, um, changes the, the number of degree for polynomials, but we see that we are like our formulas are still exact even in these cases. Right, so after this point, we have kind of, we've categorized uh, the number of degree for polynomials, at least up to degree five. Um, and we also have categorized this for um, for the for the hybrid method, this this kind of guess and then run grub basis algorithm. And already this is kind of enough to say something about how easy it is to run these grub basis attacks. But we'll go a bit further and kind of use all this knowledge to propose uh, a new attack on this scheme. So recall at degree four we had this formula here, and we also had this kind of correction uh, component which we said was this, uh, or the, the, the number of public polynomials D times the number of quadratic modifier polynomials. But what happens if we add a randomly chosen quadratic polynomials PR to the system? Um, 
so then we actually expect this d part to grow with one. Uh, and this is actually, this is both what we expect kind of from the theory and this is what we are seeing in practice as well. Because this means the kind of, since we've added this to the system, then we also kind of get these combinations, um, all the quadratic modified polynomials times this new polynomial. So in some sense, this cancels out from, from this dimension because it's already available in the, in the system. And what that means is that now we can kind of do the computations, go up to compute the Grieffel polynomials, uh, and then we'll look at how does this new sort of random element um, contribute in making these the Grieffel polynomials. And it turns out that kind of, because from what we discussed, this will be kind of, like it's multiplied with these modified polynomials. So essentially, if you are able to go up and compute the Grieffel polynomials, you do learn something about these secret modifiers. Now, this is a slight simplification. Uh, you also get like trivial syzygies, uh, but we'll deal with that kind of in more, more detail in the paper. So we do learn something about the secret modifiers. However, it's kind of, this might still be quite difficult to compute directly because it's a high, maybe a high degree, a large number of variables and all that sort of stuff. So our solution to that is actually setting some of the variables to zero, just to zero. Um, so this makes it easier. I mean, there's less variables. And from our formulas, we also saw that this can sometimes mean that the first full degree is, is um, smaller. And the idea is that kind of we do have this uh, set of variables. We set all of them to zero. So that's what this notation means. So that's just the polynomial gi where everything, all of these are set to zero. And we see that the same observation really holds. So we kind of get these, uh, the Grieffel polynomials, even in this projected um, system, we do have the same thing. So we learn, uh, we still learn something about kind of these local polynomials, these secret modifier polynomials that's been projected. Um, so if you can kind of do this for different variable sets, we are able to kind of glue together these different local polynomials and kind of get um, the global modifier polynomial, which is what we, what we want in the first place. So instead of kind of doing everything at once, we are projecting along um, sort of much smaller sets and we are able to kind of glue together and recover this polynomial. Um, so for more details on how we actually do that, you can, you can look up in, uh, in the paper. And this is really saving a lot of both time and memory. So for example, for the 80-bit um, suggested 80-bit parameters, we're actually able to set over half the variables to zero kind of using these ideas. Uh, so this is a very, very simplified overview of the tech. You do choose uh, certain variable sets uh, after some rules. Uh, you kind of form this extended system by adding this randomly chosen poly polynomial. Uh, now for each of these sets, you kind of uh, project, you set all the variables here to zero, and then you kind of go up, compute the grief of polynomials, which will give you these sort of local or the projected modifiers. And now, once you've collected all of them from all the different variable sets, you kind of glue them all together to find the quadratic form of these secret modifiers. And what we find is that for the IP modifier, we are able to recover everything, even like the linear forms. So we are completely breaking that sort of modifier. For the Q+, we actually only learn the quadratic part, but we don't learn the, the linear part of it. So um, in a sense, you could say that we learn the most important part, but not quite everything. So how does this look for the uh, suggested 80-bit uh, parameters? So recall that this, um, here they are. So we, um, we are able to kind of run the attack uh, described on the previous slide, kind of retrieve this um, quadratic form of the modifiers after using two to the power of 63 operations. And kind of using this information, um, we, um, we, we sort of, using a naive method, we kind of guess, guess values for the modifiers and then you sort of do add them to uh, your system and then run Grobner basis. Uh, this will require about kind of in between this, this, um, this uh, between two to the power of 67 and two to the power of 77 operations. So that depends on how fast you're able to do your linear algebra. Um, <clears throat> 
And the reason why it still takes a little bit of time is that it's kind of you lack this linear part of, of the, uh, the Q plus modifier. So that's the only thing holding us back. Uh, so we don't write anything more about this in the paper, but this might presumably be even more improved, say, for example, using uh, rank techniques or something like that. So I do really think that 2 to the power of 63 is sort of the security that this system actually has. Right, so um, concluding, um, the, the attack that we do have break the suggested parameters for the dub encryption scheme. And I'm not really sure how to kind of make things, change things, tweak things such that it's secure and efficient. So, I mean, you could obviously just apply, you know, a lot more modifiers, but that really ruins your uh, decryption time. So as I briefly mentioned in the beginning, the ideas could also be applied to other central maps, typically like C star and HFE, for example, and other modifiers where minus vinegar and projection are very popular ones. Um, so this is all very effective against multivariate encryption schemes, uh, but signature schemes or signature bin field schemes um, can easily be sort of protected against this. For here, so here you can, for example, uh, choose a significant amount of minus without, uh, while still being effective. So that is one way to do it. And that was it.